Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're gonna talk about my birth story because it did not go the way that I had hoped or expected. And I really wanna share that with you guys. I also wanted to share me and Romy's postpartum symptoms, how we're doing, how we're feeling, what's going on. We are a week and a half since Romy was born. It'll be two weeks on Saturday. And so we've had some interesting, some, or I've had some interesting postpartum symptoms and Romy's first doctor's appointment didn't go as expected. She needs to gain some weight. So I wanted to share that with you guys and how we are helping her gain weight from home. So if you're interested in hearing all of that, then just keep watching. Romy was due on April 3rd, and about March 17th, I started to feel some contractions. They were pretty intense. They didn't feel like typical Braxton Hicks contractions. They felt more like menstrual cramps, like really severe menstrual cramps. I kind of thought maybe I was going into labor, but I wasn't sure. It just, it wasn't, it just wasn't very clear. Like I couldn't, I couldn't really tell if it was real labor or not. And that was really frustrating to me because with Marley, I just knew. I just, they, they came out of nowhere in the middle of the night and it was, so they were super intense and it wasn't like anything that I ever felt and I went to the hospital and that was that. But with this one, I just wasn't sure. Contractions lasted for several days and they would kind of come and go. So I knew at that point they weren't, it wasn't real labor, but it was still concerning to me because they were pretty intense. Some of them I would have to kind of like breathe through that following Tuesday, which I think was like the 22nd or the 23rd, I woke up in the middle of the night with super, super intense contractions and I thought that that was labor. And again, I just wasn't 100% sure because they weren't super consistent. So all of those previous days from the 17th up to the 22nd, i had been having these contractions mostly at night they would be about 10 minutes. Sometimes they would get as close as six minutes. But then after a minute, after a while, it would go back up to like 30 minutes apart. So I'm like, well, that's not really consistent. I don't feel like this is labor, but dang, these contractions are really intense not to be. So on that Tuesday, it was like 22nd or 23rd. I was like, we're going to go because these are so intense. There's no way that this is not labor. So we get everything ready. We, we pack up my daughter. We get her a bag because she's in school. We... Um, take her to the neighbor's house and we go to the hospital. They're like, okay, well, we're going to keep you for two hours to see if you progress. I believe at that point I was a two, which I was a two at my previous doctor's appointment as well. So I don't think that I had progressed any. I think they may have told me that I was close to a three but really still a two. So I was like, okay, great. Because with Marley, I progressed a centimeter every hour. And I just assumed that's what it was going to be with this one. And they come back within two hours. Of, and in that two hour time frame, my contractions were all over the place. They weren't consistent. Some weren't even that painful. And so I'm like, okay, maybe this is not it. And they come back in two hours. I hadn't progressed any, so they sent me home. And that was disappointing because, of course, when you think the moment's here, you get really excited, and it wasn't. I kind of felt not embarrassed, but just confused because, you know, as a woman, I just feel like we're expected to just know. Like, my husband kept saying, you know, is this it? Like just asking me all these questions and I'm like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. Sometimes it's harder than just knowing. I, with Marley, I just knew. I just knew. And maybe that's why he was asking me all these questions because with Marley, everything was just so easy. It was literally textbook from the moment she was conceived to now. Like, she's just been the easiest child from day one. And my sweet little Romy has not. <laughs> From day one. She has definitely been the harder of the two and she's only a week and a half old. But it just, I just didn't know. It was really hard to tell because they, 
I think it was because they felt so intense that I just felt like they had, that had to be labor, but then they weren't consistent. That Thursday, so two days later, I go to my weekly doctor's appointment. They basically told me the same thing that the hospital told me, and that is you're in pre-labor, which is why you're feeling these contractions. Yes, they're gonna come and go. Sometimes they might get a little consistent for a while, but then if you get up and move around, if you take a shower or a hot bath, if they become less consistent, then it's not real labor and you don't need to come to the hospital. You only need to come to the hospital when they are about five minutes apart consistently for I think she said one to two hours so I was like okay great she's an and another doctor and he came in and checked me and he said the same thing that I was a two close to a three that he could get me to a three and I was about 50% effaced so they were like at this point you could go into labor at any time so just be prepared it may be later today or it could be a couple days from now there's just no way of knowing but just be prepared for anything and so again I felt discouraged because I really felt like once I went to my doctor's appointment that would just be it they would be like okay no you're ready because I just kept feeling those contractions and with Marley I wasn't I didn't pre-labor I just went into labor one night and that was that with this one I had been in labor at this point for over a week it was just all so new to me and I didn't fully understand it but we took the doctor's advice we went home we prepared ourselves for the big event to happen at any time and I just tried to take my mind off of it but the main thing that scared me about all of this was that I just felt like I wasn't going to make it to the hospital in time. I don't know if it's because this one has just been so different from the first one or if it's from all of the videos and stories online where these women did not make it to the doctor in time and they had their babies at home, in the car, in the ambulance, on the way to the hospital. Like I've just seen so many of these things. I, I don't know where this fear came from. It's definitely there and I talked to the doctor about it and the doctor's like you watch too many videos like that's really rare that's not gonna happen to you you're gonna be totally fine just come to the hospital when you're about your contractions are about five minutes apart now he did say if you get scared and you feel like you need to come to the hospital and it's not time yet that's okay we'd rather you be safe than sorry we want you to be comfortable so I'm glad he did say that but I still felt like I just wasn't gonna make it on time so the next day, it was Friday, and I get up, I go to work, Marley goes to school, we, it's just a normal day. I go to work, I work all day long. Didn't really have any contractions, to be honest with you. I think the previous two days, I didn't have any contractions, and it was like, every day up until that point, I would wake up in the middle of the night with super, super intense contractions that would make me think that I was in labor. Then I would get up, and I would do something, and they would kind of taper off. So, but Friday, I just went to work. I didn't really notice anything different other than I felt like I had Braxton Hicks every five minutes, every 10 minutes. So my Braxton Hicks contractions got really, really consistent. I thought that was kind of weird because typ typically Braxton Hicks contractions are very random, sporadic, not consistent. And I didn't pay any mind because Braxton Hicks is not real labor. But I did think that, it, I remember thinking, that's kind of weird. They've been going on all day long, like five, 10 minutes apart all day. So after work, I go home and it's just a typical evening. There is nothing crazy happening, nothing. And then I go to, we go to bed. I wake up in the middle of the night with these super intense contractions again. And my first thought is, it's nothing because I've been having this issue. I've been having them in the middle of the night. And I told my doctor, most of my intense contractions only happened at night. She thought that was weird, like almost like she had never heard of that before or something. But so here we are again in the middle of the night with these intense contractions. I didn't know what to do. I'm like, <laughs> they only happen at night. During the day, I feel like I don't really have any contractions. So I'm just assuming at this point, I'm still pre-laboring. There's nothing to tell me that it, it's really any different. I didn't feel like when I woke up that they were very consistent. I felt like they were still like 20, 30 minutes apart, but not consistently. 
So, but they were so intense. They were so intense. So I got up and I took a shower and then the shower helped just because of the heat, but it didn't fully take them away. And then I got dressed and I laid back in bed because again, I didn't know if it was real labor or not. So then I get back in bed, they're still there. Up again and I'm like, I'm gonna blow dry my hair. Because again, the doctor had said, you know, do some other things, do some activities, take a shower to try to get them to go away. If they don't go away and they're consistent, then that's when you know it's real labor. So I tried doing that, I blow dried my hair, got done with that, laid back down, then they were still there. So at that point, I woke up my husband and I was like, can you help me time these contractions? Because I've tried a couple different things. They're not going away. So we start timing them and we decide, okay, let's go to the doctor. Because at this point, they were so intense, you guys, that I was leaning over the bed. I was having to breathe through them. By the time my husband got Marley dressed and over to the neighbor's house, I was in tears they were that painful i was in tears and i have never experienced that with marley by the time i got to the hospital i was only like a three by the time i got to a f or maybe even a two and by the time i got to a four they admitted me and they immediately started giving me pain medicine and then shortly after that i got my epidural so I didn't really feel any super intense contractions. Whatever the contractions feel like up to like a two or three, which don't get me wrong, they're painful, but they're not that intense. I mean, you can still talk through them and get through them. For me to be in tears and like leaning over the bed, having to breathe through these things at home was kind of scaring me. But at the same time, even with all of that going on, you guys, I still felt like, well, maybe this is still not real labor. I was still so confused. And Dylan came back home from taking Marley to the neighbor. I even was like, can you make the bed? Can you pick up your clothes? Like I was even <laughs> like trying to pick things up because my mom was coming in to get Marley and she was staying with us. So I was like, can you do this? Can you do that really quick? Anyway, we get in the car, we're driving to the, the hospital and the whole way to the hospital, I am just in tears. The contractions at this point are definitely five minutes apart. They're consistent. I had tried all of that stuff. I had been running around the house trying to get our, all of our, our stuff together and they didn't go away and they were five minutes apart. So he drops me off at the front of the hospital. I walk in and the nurse is trying to ask me some questions to get me admitted upstairs. I couldn't even respond to him. I was in so much pain, you guys. Couldn't even respond to him. I, I immediately start crying. They send me upstairs and they admit me and the nurse finally, I'm in my gown, I'm in the bed and the nurse checks me and you guys, I was an eight an eight at that point when she told me that i was an eight i instantly felt overwhelmed and sad because i knew that there was a big chance that i was not going to get an epidural i know there's a lot of mamas out there who have had a natural birth multiple times even that was just not my plan <laughs> I am definitely one of those women who want the epidural and there's reasons for that that I don't want to get into right now, but I childbirth scares me because of something that happened in my family and I wanted that epidural. I didn't want to put any strain on my body. So the doctor said right after she told me I was an eight, she said, I'm just gonna, I don't want to scare you but there's a good chance you may not get an epidural you're too far along and when she said that i instantly started crying i think dylan felt so bad for me he could tell number one i was just in so much pain with the contractions but two like the actual birthing part of the child scared me so much so she told me that i had to get a whole bag of fluids in my iv before they would give me the epidural and once the bag was three quarters of the way down then they could call for the anesthesiologist so I'm sitting here an eight, trying to get through all these contractions. At this point, you guys, the contractions were so painful. They didn't offer me any type of pain medication. I'm sitting here looking at this bag, like trying to, okay, it's almost there, it's almost there, it's almost there, maybe like three more contractions and then you can get your epidural. And um, they didn't really come in and check on me that much, which I felt like they should have. With Marley, I felt like the nurses were constantly coming in checking me and I had an epidural and I had pain medication even before the epidural. This one. I had nothing 
and I was scared. So the bag's three quarters of the way down. The nurse was <laughs> nowhere to be found, really. So Dylan goes out there and gets the nurse, and she's like, okay, yeah, I was getting ready to come in and check on you. The bag's three quarters of the way, so let me go get the anesthesiologist. Well, she's gone for like another 10, 15 minutes. No answer, no nothing. So Dylan goes back out there to figure out where the anesthesiologist is. The nurse comes in and she's like, well, he lives about five minutes away. And we're like, he's not already here? What the heck? <laughs> but we had an emergency C-section, so he's got to go there first before he can come here. And she just kept saying, now, if you start feeling a lot of pressure down there, call me because then we gotta start pushing. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, like I'm not gonna get this epidural. There's no way that he's gonna get to the hospital, do the C-section, and then come here and do me before I have time. Remember when I got there, I was an eight and there had been so much time that had passed through all of this, probably at least an hour. So at this point, I'm like, I gotta be a nine or something. They never checked me again, so, Finally, Dylan went back out there another time and got the nurse because I started to feel pressure and I'm like, oh my gosh, this baby is coming and I don't have the epidural. She comes back in and she checks me and she's like, she's like, yeah, I mean, you're, she's like, you're there. You need to go ahead and break your water or we can try to hold off on it if you really want, if you still want to get that epidural. And so I'm like, I don't know what to do. Like, I want the epidural. Don't get me wrong. Like, I really want it. It scares me not to get it, but how much longer am I gonna have to sit here and, and breathe through these contractions? These contractions are so painful. Like, I don't know if I can do it any longer. I'd already been doing it for so long, hours at this point. I had just asked her, like, what do you think I should do? Like, once you break my water, am I still gonna have all these contractions? Like, am I gonna be able to start pushing? She was like, birthing is the easy part. Pushing is the easy part. The baby coming out, it actually, like, it feels good to get the baby out. So I'm like, okay, well, I can do that. I can do do that I can do that at this point I was like I just want it done I just want it to be over with I just want to get this baby out of me honestly so let's just do it so they break my water and then shortly after that they're like okay let's start pushing so I'm pushing and pushing and pushing I'm so exhausted with Marley I think I pushed like four times and she was here I'm telling you she was the easiest baby birth everything but this one I had to push and push and push and per and push I was so tired and then <laughs> finally she's about to come out and oh my gosh you guys if you have never experienced natural childbirth it is crazy it hurts so bad pretty much what you think it's going to feel like that's what it feels like to me it's awful it hurt so bad oh my gosh so bad I'm so I'm such like a reserved quiet person I get embarrassed easily like I don't speak up for things like I just go with the flow and I try not to draw too much attention to myself that's just me and even if I'm in pain or sad or anything I try to hide my emotions or at least mute them a little bit because it embarrasses me and I can tell you right now I didn't I didn't care I was a screaming bloody murder I was like, <laughs> I was kind of snippy with the nurses a little bit because they kept telling me, oh, she's almost here. She's almost here. I can see her. I can see her. Um, you're doing so good. You're almost there. You're almost there. And then I would have to like push 800 more times. So I'm like, you guys keep saying that. Like, when is she going to be here? <laughs> um, but just in the moment, you just... You don't care about anything. You just want to get that baby out. But it was the most excruciating pain that I have ever felt. I do not plan on having any more. Romy is our last baby unless some accident happens. But if an accident were to happen, I will be getting another epidural. There's no way I'm doing that again. I commend and my hats off to all of those women out there those mamas who have birthed naturally once if you've done it multiple times you are a superhero because that shit was 
hard. But yeah, so that's my birth story. It's kind of crazy. It's kind of, I'm sure there are way worse situations out there. I know there are way worse situations out there. Who would have loved to have mine? Mine is literally just, I wasn't expecting to not have an epidural. It scared me to not have an epidural. I had always planned on having one and it just really scared me. Like I lost my sister two weeks after having a baby when i was 14 she was 21 and so i'm not sure if she died due to complications after birth but because she died two weeks after having a baby she did have a big baby it was a lot of strain on her body she had a lot of fluid built up she was very swollen i tend to believe that it did have something to do with that and because of that childbirth just scares me. It just does. It freaks me out and I didn't want to have to put any type of strain on my body like that. And so it was just scary for me, but I got through it. Me and Romy are healthy and that is all that matters. I hope you enjoyed listening to my birth story. I hope I didn't scare anybody, but just know that if you do plan on getting an epidural, don't worry. My biggest advice would be if you feel like you need to go to the hospital, go to the hospital. Who cares if you've already been three times and they've sent you home? It does not matter. Just go because the last thing you want to do is if you have a specific birth plan or you have specific things that you want to do, you need to make sure you get to that hospital in enough time. And I don't know why I felt like I wasn't going to make it there in time, but I just had that feeling and somehow it was it was kind of right. I mean, I did make it to the hospital on time, but barely. Don't wait. Don't worry about it. And if you are planning on having an epidural, but for some reason you're not able to get one either, it is very hard. It is hard. It hurts, but you can get through it. I got through it. You can get through it. It is so worth it in the end. All of that pain immediately just goes away right after you see your precious baby. So let's jump right in to my symptoms that I've been experiencing. The first symptom that you should know about after you have your baby, your contractions are not going to go away. I don't know if I just didn't remember this or if it was just because they weren't as intense, but they do say that your after labor pains, contractions, are more intense the more children you have. So I've had two and I gotta tell ya, the second one, oh my gosh. Like after having all of those contractions and laboring for all that time and not having the epidural, after I pushed her out, I was like, oh, I'm done. I can just be relaxed. I'm done. No, because those after labor pains kicked my butt. They were so intense, so intense. And if you breastfeed, they're even worse because it makes your uterus start contracting again to go back to its original size. It's, it's pretty rough even after having the baby. It was definitely more intense when I would breastfeed and then I would get a little bit of relief after she was done, but those lasted for at least a week, maybe a little bit longer into the second week, but for sure a good solid week, you're gonna have those after labor pains and they're not fun. The next symptom is, of course, you're going to bleed. I am currently a week and a half postpartum and I'm still bleeding. It definitely has lightened up. It's not as much. I feel like, I feel like it shouldn't be too much longer to where I'm done, but who knows really. I did have a pretty significant clot come out when I was at the hospital. It was very, very, very large. It kind of freaked me out, but the nurse said not to worry about it as long as I didn't have any more that size, and I haven't. So once they send you home, they tell you to look out for golf ball sized clots or larger, then you need to call your doctor. So anything smaller than that is pretty normal and it's okay. So luckily I haven't had anything larger than really like a nickel size come out since leaving the hospital. So I'm pretty good there. I've also been experiencing some headaches and I'm not sure where those are coming from. Um, I don't really get headaches very often. 
So when I do get them, they kind of freak me out a little bit, especially this last one. It was pretty intense, but the past three days I've been drinking caffeinated coffee because I've been so tired and it's been helping me so much. And I'm sure that could be where the headaches are coming from because I don't drink caffeine. I still feel some pressure down there. It was pretty intense. The first week postpartum, it was hard for me to move around. It was hard for me to get into bed. It was hard for me to walk up the stairs. There was a lot of things that it was harder for me to do. Now, I definitely feel a lot better. It's not as hard. I don't feel as much pressure. But if I do a lot of activity, like I did go to the grocery store the other day, which maybe I shouldn't have done, but it's really just walking. I made sure not to get anything heavy. I didn't, you know, grab cases of water or anything like that. I just picked up a few things, but just the walking around the grocery store. When I got back, I definitely felt some pressure. So it, it brought it on. So I've been trying to take it easy since then, not do a whole lot. I do have my five-year-old at home with me because she is out of school for spring break and the newborn. So, you know, I still have to get up and do a lot of things throughout the day. So I'm um, just trying to take it easy when I can and if I can. Of course, I'm not getting a lot of sleep because the baby needs to feed so often and... There's just so much that needs to be done throughout the day that when the baby is sleeping, you know, I try to get other things done. She's actually waking up right now, if you can hear her in the background. So I'm probably going to have to feed her pretty soon. But other than that, you guys, it's not too bad. I would say the first week postpartum is going to be the worst one. You're going to have your after labor pains. You're going to have a lot of pressure down there. You're going to be changing your pad constantly. You're going to be tired, exhausted. Once you get into that second week, all of those symptoms pretty much let up and they may still be there, but they're way less intense, way less noticeable, and way more manageable. Um, I did want to talk to you guys about my weight and show you guys what I look like a week and a half postpartum. I know a lot of people are interested in that, but just remember, every body is different, just like every birth is different, every baby is different. So, aw, baby. So before I got pregnant, I weighed 135 pounds. During my pregnancy, I wanted to gain somewhere between 30 and 35 pounds. Well, I ended up gaining 40 pounds. So I went five pounds over what I initially wanted to gain, but I'm totally fine with that. It is what it is. I gave birth to Romy at 39 weeks, so I almost went all the way to my due date, so I'm fine with that. I have, at this point, lost, I think, around 16 pounds since giving birth, somewhere along there, so I still have about 20 pounds, 25 pounds, something like that to go. So I'm going to be working on that, but I'm not going to stress myself out about it. I'm going to lose the weight when I lose the weight, and... It's just going to be what it is. But I wanted to show you guys. So currently I've been living in... Romy! What is wrong? So currently I've been living in my husband's t-shirts and some leggings or like a tank top and some leggings. Just something that's comfortable and easy for me to feed in. So let me show you my postpartum body at a week and a half postpartum. <laughs> Okay, so now for Romy and her doctor's appointment. So we went to our first doctor's appointment. I think it's about, she was born on Saturday. Her first doctor's appointment was on Tuesday. And they weighed her and her weight was about 10% of her birth weight, which all newborns lose weight after they're born, but they don't want babies to lose more than 10% of their birth weight. So Romy was right there on that 10% mark. So they wanted us to start supplementing with formula because I was exclusively breastfeeding at the time, which I exclusively breastfed Marley too and really didn't have any problems. I was a little disheartened. I was a little upset about that. I didn't want to have to do formula. Not that there's anything wrong with it. I just, that's not what I wanted to do. And so um, we started supplementing with formula. I was feeding her two formula bottles a day. 
at two ounces so she was getting four ounces of formula a day and the rest was breast milk she didn't really give me strict instructions she just said I want you to start giving her a little bit of formula each day so that's what I did and then we went back two days later or three days later on Friday she had lost more weight and so at that point I was really upset because she had dropped down to 12% of her birth weight I was really upset I was really upset because I was worried about Romy first and foremost like I wanted her to be healthy I wanted her to grow I wanted her to you know be putting on weight but I was also upset because I wanted to breastfeed her and I was worried that there was something wrong with my breast milk maybe I wasn't getting enough or maybe there I just my breast milk is just not strong enough I don't know so I was really worried that she was going to tell me that I had to stop breastfeeding it just wasn't something that I was prepared for and so at that point she had given me me very strict instructions on what to to do and how to feed Romy so as of that Friday I had to I was only allowed to feed her 20 minutes from breastfeeding and I had to also give her a two ounce bottle of formula at every feeding so I would feed her I would breastfeed her for 20 minutes and then I would give her a two ounce bottle of formula at every single feeding and sometimes Romy wouldn't want all of that that was a lot of food for a newborn and I was feeding her every two hours at that point because I had originally told her that I was feeding Romy about every three to four hours. She would just feed until she was full um, and then I would feed on command too. So if she was kind of nudging around looking for the nipple, then I would pick her up and I would feed her. Or if she was fussing and I could tell that she was hungry, I would pick her up and feed her. Otherwise, she was getting fed every three to four hours. So she was getting fed in between then too, just whenever she was hungry. But then or Romy's doctor had said, only 20 minutes on the breast, no longer than that. And she needs a two ounce bottle of formula each feeding. So we did that. I made sure she was getting fed every two hours on the dot. I made sure that I was tracking everything. I wrote it all down on my phone, every single feeding, how much she ate, if she didn't drink the full bottle, if she ended up spinning some of it back up. There for a while, she was spinning up pretty bad um, because she wasn't used to the formula. And that concerned me, like is she even getting any of it? Her diapers became more wet. We had a lot more wet diapers. Another concern was that she hadn't pooed since we left the hospital when we were at the hospital she had two poopy diapers and then she hadn't had any between then and our appointment on, the, on that Friday so almost a week had passed with no more poopy diapers so that was really concerning we just wanted her to poop and gain weight her next doctor's appointment was on Mon that following Monday so that really only gave us like two three two or three days if you count Friday to get her to start gaining more weight. But that whole weekend, I made sure I was tracking everything. I made sure she was eating every two hours. Even if she didn't want it, um, I was just tracking exactly how much she did want. So we went back to the doctor on Monday. I think she had dropped down to 6.9 at her lowest. And when we went back on Monday, she was back up to 7.1. So she was born 7'7", seven, seven. so she was she's almost back up to her birth weight. They have to be back up to their birth weight by two weeks. So hopefully we will make that milestone as well. The doctor did tell me that I could stop formula at this point, that I could continue just to breastfeed exclusively, but I'm still a little concerned. I want I told her I wanted to do it another week just to make sure that Romy is gaining weight and she meets that that two week mark of meeting her birth weight. I don't, I don't know, I'm just scared now. I just feel like my breast milk isn't enough and it's not gonna be enough to get her to gain weight. I don't know. So I'm gonna give it another week and see what that does and hopefully she is back up to her birth weight by that two week mark. But I will definitely keep you guys posted. If you guys have any questions about how we're doing or what we're doing, just let me know. I also want you guys to let me know what types of videos you're interested in seeing. Are you interested in seeing more of me interacting with the girls? Do you want routine videos, like morning routines, nighttime routines? 
or maybe like a day in the life of a toddler and a newborn, or you wanting to see more of my postpartum symptoms and baby milestones. I was thinking about doing another try-on haul for you guys with my postpartum body. So I have some ideas, but I want to know what you guys are interested in seeing because if, you know, I'm doing this for me, but I'm also doing it for you guys. So if there's something specifically that you guys want to see, let me know. Otherwise, that is it for me today. I love you. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you all next time. Bye.